Justin here today we are going to be checking out using legato for our minor pentatonic scale now legato means smoothly in practice it means using hammer-ons and flick-offs instead of picking every note now with the minor pentatonic scale we're going to be picking when we move to a new string and then hammering on one note or flicking off now just explain this flick off thing most people most guitar sites call a flick off a pull off that's a more common term I don't think you pull it anywhere, and I think a flick it better describes the action that you're using. So I call it a flick off. Other people might call it a pull off. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Now, you've already met the hammer on when we looked at the exercise called the finger gym. If you haven't seen the finger gym exercise, you might want to go and look that up over on the website. Really good for developing this hammer on skill as well as general finger strength. So what we're doing now, this we're going to use the hammer on and the flick off in a very practical way, combining it with the minor pentatonic scale, which you also should have learned previously in I think in grade two you should have learned uh, the minor pentatonic scale if you're not familiar with a minor pentatonic scale box one then you might want to go and check that out on the website as well because in this lesson we're going to be combining those two things so let's get started okay just to revise the minor pentatonic first of all uh, hopefully you remember it looks like this we're just doing one finger per fret for now going to play that same thing using hammer-ons and flick-offs. So basically you're going to play this first note and hammer the little finger down. Like I say, if you've done finger jam, you should already be familiar with that motion. Then you do the same thing on the fifth string, but now it's third finger because this is how the scale goes, right? So first finger, little finger, first finger, third finger. But trying to get that second note, the same volume as the first. Same thing on the fourth string, same thing on the third string. On the second string, we're back to using the little finger, which will go down in the eighth fret. And the same on the thinner string. So all of the way up, pick, hammer, pick. Before we go any further, really important at this stage that you're getting the timing consistent and even. What you don't want to do is go... Not helpful. That's Just don't do that. So you want it to be at a consistent speed all of the way through. Don't worry about trying to do it fast yet. Much better to be doing it slowly and getting it right. It's really important. So just think in terms of like... Much better to be getting it right and be feeling confident with it way before you start speeding it up. I'd say at least 10 times perfectly from memory before you even think about speeding it up. Okay, now let's look at what happens when we go back down the scale, physically up, but it's down the scale. So we'd start with our little finger down this time. We put first finger in place already because what we want to do is play the note with the little finger. We'll pick it and then you see we flick a little finger off. You can actually do it even without picking that first note. If you flick correctly, you get the second note. Okay, it's a good test as to see if your flick is working correctly, is to put it on and then flick the finger off. Okay, so pick, flick, then the same thing on the second string. Now, what really real common mistake that happens here is not muting the thinner string. So that first finger should be playing that note but lifting up enough to mute that first string. If you're going too much onto the point, you'll do this. And you pick the open, you're gonna get that open string ringing out as well. So first thing it wants to be a little flatter. 
so that as you flick the little finger off, if you do hit the thinner string, it's not going to ring out. Also note that the tip of the first finger is actually touching the third string there as well. So all three, uh, the strings either side of the one that I'm playing uh, are actually muted as well. So little finger, flick off. Little finger, flick off. Now third finger, flick off. See, the note goes down, the first finger moves over, and then the flick off happens. And again, the first finger is muting all of those notes underneath. Then third finger, flick off, middle finger, flick off. Again, do it real slow. One. Slow, careful practice is what's required here. And the question everyone always has is, pick and direction, should I pick up or pick down? At this stage with what you're doing, I really don't think it matters. It seems like I'm doing mostly down picks, but if you wanted to use up picks, it's not really a big deal. Later on, when things get a little bit faster, then you might want to start thinking about the picking direction, but it, a lot depends on the context. So, you know, right now, don't worry about it. Focus on the hammer-ons being nice and strong. So when the hammer-on note goes down, that you hear the note nice and clearly, as close to the volume of the pick note as you can, although that is asking a lot for it to be exactly the same. You're just aiming for that, but don't be surprised if it's a little quieter. And with the flick-offs, you're aiming for the second note to be as loud as the first note, again, of course, but you also want to just be careful that you're not going crazy with the flick-offs to get, to get this other strings ringing out when you do it. I find it difficult to do it. My fingers are very well trained to, to mute the other strings, so to deliberately make that mistake is a little awkward. So once you can do the hammer-ons and the flick-offs, you're then going to combine them into one flowing sequence. The tricky bit here is, once you've gone up, here you're going to go pick, hammer, flick. So only one pick on that string. Hammer, flick. Now here, pick, flick, hammer, pick, hammer. So you're only picking once when you go to each new string. Once you're confident doing that, then it's time to pop it to the metronome. My recommendation would be whatever speed you're doing it at without the metronome, but you know that you're getting it consistent, do it a little bit slower than that with the metronome to start off with. Then it's up to you. The rule I use 10, but 10 times perfectly consistently from memory, then I speed it up a little bit. Okay, it depends the speed, how much you speed up your metronome by, depends on the speed that you're at. Obviously, the faster you go, the smaller increments you need. So you might start by going up five beats per minute to begin with, if you started at, say, 70 beats a minute or something like that. As you get faster and faster, you might find that you're just moving it up one beat per minute each time. <laughs> So I'm going to give you one more cool little trick to check out. It's kind of, it takes the exercise from being an exercise into a kind of lick that you might be able to actually use in a solo. It's basically a group of six notes that you start off of each string. So we start again on the thicker string, on the root note there. We play up three strings, which is six notes. Then we do the same thing starting off of the fifth string. Off the fourth string and off the third string. Okay, try not to have the gaps. I left a big gap there between each six so you could clearly see the group. But ideally you want... Okay, and then you can reverse that pattern exactly to do groups of six going down. So we end up with...
So one more thing I feel I should mention, you're bound to encounter it on your guitar journey, and that is you're going to see people using the third finger on the thinnest two strings of the minor pentatonic instead of the pinky. Now, I would encourage you to start this kind of exercise by using your pinky. Little fingers are notoriously weak, so that extra exercise is going to do you some good. But what you're likely to find is you'll see people playing the minor pentatonic. And here, they're going to use your third finger. And you can see why. This is string bending. And for string bending, you want your fingers at an angle, not square like that. You never do string bending this way. It's all about the hand motion. This isn't a string bending lesson. I've got a whole lesson on just how to do string bending. But you want to see that the fingers are at an angle now compared to being straight like this. If you're using your pinky, you keep all of the fingers kind of pointing directly up. So use that finger, there's an angle. It's going to have to straighten up by the time you get to the thicker strings anyway. So if you want to spend a bit of time working on that stretch as well between the third finger and then working on that transition to straighten up, notice thumbs creeping over the top as well, right? Now thumbs back behind. There's thumbs creeped over and it's back behind. It's a really good exercise. It's not something that I would encourage you to focus on right now, but if you're into the blues and if you see other people doing it, it's good to understand why. And it's good to start exploring the, the shift in hand that you get between the straight fingers and the angled fingers. Because as soon as we embark on a little bit more serious blues stuff, you're going to see those angled fingers pop up all the time. The blues is one of the key kind of vocabulary features of the blues is string bending. So it is something that you're going to have to work on in the very near future if you want to go down that line on uh, that particular journey on your guitar adventure. So look, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know in the comments over on the website, the discussion tab, if you're enjoying it, what things you're struggling with, what you're finding easy. Remember, you can ask questions over there as well. We always try and check in and answer the questions and put common questions up into the text for the lesson. So if you're struggling with something, you might find that the text part of this lesson will help as well. If you happen to be over on YouTube, then there'll be a link in the description to head you over to the right page on the website. If you are over on YouTube, I always appreciate you hitting that subscribe and like button, all of that usual stuff. Uh, yeah, have yourself a fantastic day. Remember, this is part of the Grade 3 series over on the website. It's got a real nice continuous line, nice syllabus, all worked out for you. Practice routines, all of that. If you haven't checked it out uh, in a while, then you might want to head over and have a look. It's loads of fun. See you for plenty more very soon. You take care. Bye-bye.